Good morning, Facebook family and friends. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson, the pastor of the Rock of Our Salvation Church. Hey, happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. We want to greet you in the name of our Father and our Son and the Son. So we celebrate this day, and this is the day that the Lord has made. The Word tells us we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to pray for us at this time. Father, we want to thank you for another day we get to come before you to hear your word. God, we thank you that uh, we get to celebrate and honor our mothers, God, on this day. The word tells us we are to honor our mothers and fathers, God, that we may have a long life. And God, that we would do that today uh, in a special way. So Father, we ask that you will be our speaker and our teacher. God, let our hearts rejoice over your word. We get to celebrate this day. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen. Hey, man, I am so encouraged of this special day today that we get to honor our mothers. And that being said, I want to bring you today a special guest that want to honor our mothers today. At this time, let us honor our very own First Lady, Bridget Stevenson. Now, she will come to honor our mothers. Good morning, everyone. I am here to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Today is your special day. You know, this year, Mother's Day is very different than it has been and ever, at least for me, um, because we're on a lock-in, lockdown, stay in place, stay in home, shelter in place, however you may want to word it. We're in it right now. Um, and so what we usually do traditionally for Mother's Day this year is going to be a little different. I know our family, we gather together and we have dinner to celebrate the moms. Um, all the men in the family cook the dinner. They serve the moms the dinner. And special treat, they wash the dishes and clean up after dinner. And the moms, we just get to sit back, relax, put our feet up, and enjoy the day and be served. So I'm actually going to miss that this year. I'm going to miss sitting around the dinner table with my mom, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and all my close friends. So um, for me, Mother's Day is going to be different today. And it may be for you as well. I'm sure a lot of you have traditions that you do to celebrate the moms. Some of you go out to restaurants, you can't get in a restaurant on Mother's Day because they're so crowded. Well, today it's because they're closed. Um, some of you may have a getaway at a hotel, like an overnight stay, no kids, no responsibilities. Um, that may be different, may not be able to do that this year. I'm sure there are several other ways that you may celebrate Mother's Day, but this year, today, we have to celebrate in different ways. And in light of that, I have two words for you, joy and peace. Let's look at a couple of scriptures that talk about that. The first one we're going to look at is in John 14 and verse 27. It says, this is Jesus talking to us. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace that we have comes from Jesus. And in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, it says, uh, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Again, we see that peace comes from Jesus and he calls and we are called to as God's people to let that peace that we receive from Christ rule in our hearts. So today for Mother's Day, you may be feeling like, oh man, I can't do what I usually do to celebrate Mother's Day. Those thoughts and feelings you have in your heart, let them be replaced by the peace that we get from Christ. And then the second word was joy. And we're going to look at the scripture in Luke chapter 10 in verse 21. It says, at, the, at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Now, joy comes 
to us through the Holy Spirit. So today, on this very different but still yet special Mother's Day, my prayer for you is to have that peace that comes from Christ and Christ alone to fill you and to let you also be filled with the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. So this Mother's Day, I wish you peace and joy. Happy Mother's Day. Amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Thank you so much, First Lady, Sister Bridget. We appreciate that special word for all our mothers today, just in a way that we just wanted to recognize our moms and wanted you all to feel special. I know that people have been saying that uh, uh, we like to see Sister Bridget come online. We want Sister Bridget. Well, that's Sister Bridget for y'all. Hey, I'm going to keep trying to push her on this line, y'all. I'm going to try to push her to do a Wednesday night service. I am going to push her. Trust me, she has a word, y'all. That woman has a word, and I thank God for my wife. In fact, Blake, it was Blake's ideal. We were able to uh, cook Bridget breakfast this morning and serve her in bed. And I did wash the dishes. Somebody say amen. Oh, yeah, them dishes got washed. But, guys, uh, my brothers and sisters, Rock Church, our, our moms, we hope that you felt special by that special word. Now, listen, as I continue to uh, empower you all through God's word, we are going to continue to talk about this faith thing, this, this, being con this commitment, this being content. And I think it's so incredible that uh, what God has given us to help us. Now, I'm going to be so vulnerable with you all this, this morning because it's some things that my mother had told me a long time ago. And I want to honor the mothers. And I want to honor the mothers in a way to remember what mom used to tell me. And because we, I did not listen to my mother, I had some hardships, man. I am telling you guys. Hey, listen, if your mom has passed away, try to remember some of the values that mother had instilled in you because they're still good today. So I want to talk to you just a little bit here about contentment comes from seeking to please God with everything we have because we still need to be content, right? We need to be content in this moment where we're at. And so mama used to always tell me this. I kid you not. I ought to learn to be content with everything I have, with everything that I've received. But I'm going to tell you something. It took me a long time, a lot of money, a lot of hardship, a lot of stress to finally understand what my mother was talking about. To finally understand and realize that, hey, contentment is good. But the reason why I wasn't content is because of what other people had. And the fact that if I, if I bought or, re, or, or acquired what other people had, I thought they would like me, right? I thought they were really like me and that I feel accepted. And then, and so what I realized, it wasn't even material things that I wanted. It was their acceptance. It was their approval. And I wanted to please them. So I couldn't be content, although I had all these, I acquired all this stuff. But mama told me, learn how to be content. And so as I, as I was looking at the approval of others and, and seeking out what, they mean to me. And the real reality uh, was, hey, all I, I wanted to feel some type of way. And I, I thought my value would come from them. Here are some of the examples that I did when I tried to get the approval of others. I would never say no to people, right? I would never say no, just so that I can get along. You know, I felt at times really uncomfortable if someone was angry at me because I didn't give them what they asked of me, you know, I began to act like the people around me. Right. So I want their proof. So I want to act like those people around me. I also really depended on a validation. Right. Because I just I just wanted to fit in. Uh, I will actually go through great lengths of uh, what I would call uh Avoiding conflicts just so I can, I can fit in. And then I found really hard to admit when my feelings were hurt by them. So in essence, I found out the hard way that it, it, it's hard to be content because I desired the approval of others. And the consequence of that, I will leave myself open all the time for disappointment. 
And it will happen day in and day out because I needed a validation to, to help me to feel better about myself. I value what they said. I, I thought my self-worth was, was, was all about what their thoughts was. And in, in reality, that's what I felt like love was. What people can say to me. What people, how people would value me. But mama used to say, don't worry about what people think. Worry about what God is saying. And I'm going to tell you something. The problem with all that, all the things that people were, you know, I, 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 I thought this would be right on time. What people thought about me, I had an epiphany that I really was a people pleaser. That's who I was, a people pleaser. That's, that was the bottom line. That's why I couldn't be content because I was trying to strive for, for, for what I believe I needed from them. And in the, in the essence of that, it was just trying to please people. I read this quote. It said, it said, when people pleasers make the reactions of other people, their standards for how they evaluate them. So I thought, okay, what you believe in me, that, that, that was my standard, the way you evaluate me. It says, therefore, people pleaser are looking to other people as gods rather than God, which is idolatry. See, this imbalance leads to unnecessary stress and is contrary to the will of God and for God to do what he wants to do in our lives. I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that that's who I was. That's not who my mother raised her children to be, to look to please people, which is really idolatry, right? Mama was teaching and Mama helped us to try to understand this, but I had to learn at the core, at the expense of stress, at the expense of heartbreak, at the expense of sleepless nights, trying to figure out what you think about me. Are you really my friend, right? Or is it the stuff I have acquired to be in this community? Mama used to always tell me, people may not be your friend. You would know your friends when you have nothing. You will know your friends when you really need them to speak the truth into your life. So I remember and I began to search out how can I, how can I be delivered? What is the core of, of, of people pleasing? Here was the core of it. People pleasing is the root of insecurity and, deep need, and has a deep need for approval of others than God. Yeah, it's, 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 I was insecure in some things in my life, right? People pleaser behavior is an open door for unhealthy codependence to enter into a relationship. So I had this codependence going on, right? Also, people pleasing can also turn into manipulation because the pleaser is speaking or behaving in a certain way in order to get a, a desired result. It didn't make no difference <laughs> what I had to do to make sure I got what I needed to be valued. And then people pleasers are never content, content or even come close to pleasing God. So <laughs> I had to learn some valuable things that mama had already told me. But boy, I thank God for the word of God. There are some scriptures in the Bible that I am going to share based on what, how I learned how to stop seeking after people approval or pleasing people. Now, 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 based on Galatians, right, in verse 1, Paul tells the people, he says, for verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, he says, for I am now seeking the favor of man or God. Or am I, am I striving, striving to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. And so with Paul, his first obligation was to please God and not men. 
And he was telling the church, he was helping the church to understand there's no other gospel but then the gospel I preach, the gospel that came to me. And people wanted something different, right? They wanted something based on what I would call what the itching ears wanted to hear. Mama used to always tell me, you got to watch out for the people. Are we trying to, are we trying to lift people up? Or are we trying to honor God in our lives? I remember that. I remember that. And Paul was telling the church, he says, no, no, no. I don't care what gospel coming to you. This is the gospel that was preached to me based on the word of God. And sometimes I am telling you, even as Christians, we got to be very aware of ourselves. Are we seeking after God? Now, if there's lack of contentment in our lives, maybe it's because we are seeking after other approval than actually the approval of God. What is God what does God has to say about these matters in our lives? What is it that God is trying to get us to see? Now, I want to ask you this question. Does your heart long for approval of others? Do you know people who heart longs for the approval of others? Are you seeking after the approval of God? Right? And this next question, are you a people pleaser? Yeah, are you a people pleaser? Is it hard for you to tell people no? Are you behaving in a way that the crowd is behaving just to fit in? Yeah, does it really matter the things that you have acquired already? Yeah. Do you have to have bigger and better because they have it? See, the truth of the matter is, if we're seeking after anyone's approval, that directly comes from our fleshly nature. And it's, 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 it's deep-rooted within pride. That's why it's so easy to do that. That's why it's so easy to want to fit in. Because people-pleasers do whatever it takes. And that in itself becomes a pride issue. My brothers and sisters, according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 5 and through 8 says, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what that flesh desires. But those who live according to the, what the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. That's why it's hard to be content. Especially when we seek him after approval of others. They can never fulfill you. No way can somebody fulfill you. Can no way can things and material things ever fulfill you. If you had this one time, you want a little bit more. But the truth of the matter is, it's really all about living according to. And so what Paul did, he divided two people. He divided two people in two categories. One, they, those going to be dominated by their simple nature. The other, those going to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, in other words, the Holy Spirit enables a Christian life by dwelling in the individual believers, enable them to live a righteous and a faithful life, not a life that's going to try to please others. Not a life that's going to look to seek for others' approval so that they can be validated based on what other people say. Yeah. Peer pressure also brings us to that place. And yet the Holy Spirit acts as a comforter, one who intercedes or, or, or supports or acts as an advocate, particularly in times of trials. And at that time, we have, we have people who, 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 who want to, to draw us out of what God really has for us, and that's to be content. Not trying to acquire more, not trying to take more, not trying to get more. Mama used to say, be content in what you have. So how do I stop this? How do I stop allowing this, this fleshly nature to dominate me? Because Paul was talking to the body of Christ. And there's some people that wants to hear what they itching there wants to hear. And that's not the gospel that God preaches. It's the gospel that God has said. Hey, man, hey, be content in every situation. 
There's three things I want to give you to help you to, to, to stop allowing your fleshly nature to dominate, right? The first thing is, number one, you got to write this down. Put off your old self. Even in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 22 through 24, it says, You were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupt by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitudes of your minds and to put, off the, put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Hey, think about it. He says, hey, this formal way, maybe, just maybe you that person who can't say no. Just so that you can fit in. And maybe you that person who feels uncomfortable when people get angry because you decided to not do what they wanted you to do based on what they wanted you to do. Just maybe you may be that person who began to act like the other people around you and you know mama didn't raise you that way. You know mommy ain't raised you to be that kind of person. Just maybe you may be that person who depends on other validation to keep building in you, to tell you how good you are, to tell you how valuable you are. I am telling you, the scriptures already told us how good we are in Christ. And maybe you that person who goes through great lengths to avoid conflict. I don't want this conflict because if I tell that person the real truth, they, they're not going to keep giving me their resources. They're not going to keep continue to pour into me because I need them to keep telling me the things I need to tell them. But mama told you, you can't trust everybody. Somebody say amen to that. So the real reality is we need to stop being driven by our old desires and their impulses. Yeah. I am telling you, I was that person. The second thing you can do is do this. The renewing of your mind. Romans 12 tells us in verse 1 through 2. Romans 12 says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, and watch this in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. In other words, we, we, we must be willing to put all our energy and resources at his disposal and trust him that he will guide us. We know how to sacrifice, man. I am telling you, if we don't know, listen, we know how to sacrifice. We know how to keep that drum beating as long as we get an approval that we need. We would go to great length to buy stuff, to get in debt, to stress out, just so that somebody said, girl, you know you look good in that dress. Man, you know you look good in that tie. You know how I love how that collar, girl, you got the nicest house. Your front yard look real good. In fact, hey, it goes on and on and on and on. And the truth of the matter is we feel so empty inside. Mama didn't raise us that way. Mama never raised us that way. And I am telling you, the thing about this, the body is telling us, God knows, says, if you offer your bodies as living sacrifice to him, because he knows we can actually offer our bodies now. We can offer the things we have. We will go in debt, man. We would do whatever it takes to make sure we standing on this pedestal. And people will put you on the pedestal and before you know it, your pride be like, I do whatever it takes to keep getting it. Give me some more. Somebody ought to say amen. It says, listen, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Why is this even in the Bible? Because the world has a set of patterns that it will cause us to have this custom and this fleshly and it draws our fleshly nature out and before we know it it will corrupt us because the patterns of the world mama didn't raise us that way man the world has so many sets of values and patterns that it's not even a god it will send you down into the depths of debt because the patterns of the world you give me this and I'll give you that mama never rose, raised us that way he says, not only that, he says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Therefore, you and I can do something. The only way we can be transferred, transformed by the renewing our mind is to ask the Holy Spirit to come on in, to be our guide, to be our comforter, to be our advocate, because the Holy Spirit wants to renew, re-educate, and redirect. That's the only way. 
You can ever stop people pleasing. You got to have the Holy Spirit to come on and have this way with you. You got to have to ask the Holy Spirit to be your teacher. To be your guide because you can't do it on your own strength. We don't have the strength to do that. If we did, in other words, we'll be content because we'll be trying to do whatever God wants us to do. Is just please him. The Bible says then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. It is good, it is pleasing, and it is perfect. Oh my God. If it is somebody we need to be trying to please, it is God. Yes, it is God who we are called to please. There should be an intent and a sense of urgency to stop giving over to our fleshly nature because that's why we are in a place we are in today because listen, this shutdown has shut a lot of fleshly things down. Y'all to say amen. We ought to say amen all over the place. I am telling you, man, this thing has shut us down. I don't know the last time I bought a suit at a, at a clothing store. Come on, somebody. I don't know the last time I bought some shoes at a clothing store. Come on, somebody. I guarantee you, I don't have to go to a clothing store never, uh, another day of my life, and I have more than enough. Come on, somebody. I am telling you, it's shut down. You ain't bought them shoes, girl. You ain't bought a new dress or that hat. I am telling you, wearing your mother day clothes that you had uh, on two or three years ago, and you can still fit it. I am telling you, man, it is something about when God wants us to please him. He will shut stuff down so he can get what he called us to do and be what we called to do for him. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. That is the truth. So how do we do this, Pastor? How do we how do we get to the place where, hey man, I'm not going to be dominated by my flesh and the impulses of that? There's three things I'm going to give you. You got to take these three things and you lock them in like never before. The first thing is very careful then. You got to know the first thing. It is this. Putting some valuable things to death. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 and 7 says this. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Now watch this. <laughs> this earthly nature is very clear. Sexual morality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in your life you once lived. Yeah. Do you not know if we don't put to death those things that belong to our earthly nature, which is our fleshly desires, this is where our fleshly desires come out of, it will kill us. I know some people, man, <laughs> go and become so stressed out and depressed because they're willing to do whatever it takes to get your approval. They will spend what they don't have. They'll go in debt. They'll begin to borrow. They begin to bad. They begin to steal. Whatever it takes. And let me tell you something. One of these things here, I can relate to all of them. The immorality. When you're trying to get somebody to approve and you seek and approve others, you, you, you will do whatever it takes. Even if it was given into morality sexual morality just to get their approval. That's not pleasing to God. The impurity. Conversations are being said and things are being watched. Somebody may send you a photo or something that you shouldn't be watching just so that you can fit in. You are laughing. Ha, 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 ha. And next thing you know, you're sending that and emailing that to somebody else knowing that you shouldn't be doing it. Put to death. These evil desires. It comes out of pride. The Bible says, because of these things, the wrath of God, God is coming back and he's landed all right. He's landed out. He says, because of these things, these things are separating us. And you know, mama used to tell us not to do those things. Here's the second thing. In order to seek out the God and get his approval, rid oneself from some vital things such as, you find it in Colossians chapter 3. In verse 8 and 10, it says, you must rid yourselves of all such things as anger, 
rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with these practices. See, when we really want to please God and seek after God, we got to understand what, how is our anger, right? See, when people don't do what you want them to do, do you go off, right? Yeah, right, 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 right. How's the malice in your life? How is the slander? Oh, man, you know, gossip come out of that. You can't please God, gossip and slander and then filthy language. It's, we know what that is. Excuse my French. Come on, that ain't got nothing to do with French. It's filthy language. How did we please God? Listen here, man. Mom used to say all the time. I remember when I was a little kid, man, I was cussing. I was outside. I was underneath my mother's window. She, All the kids, she heard my voice. Bobby, get yourself up here and took care of business because of the filthy language. That was not pleasing to my mother. So how in the world can it be pleasing God? Lying? Man, hey, man, I used to lie to get out of trouble. Come on, somebody. Man, mama said, did you just do that? Nope. Hey, man, she saw me do it. The whole thing is she, I didn't see her see me do it. I lied. The Bible said, how in the world is that pleasing to God? Mama used to tell me all kind of stuff, y'all. Didn't mama tell you too? So if it ain't pleasing to mama, how in the world could it be pleasing to God? He says, listen, this is something that we have done. It's a practice, <laughs> man. It says, that book says, he says, now I put on a new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of this creator. So everything that we're doing, the father's telling us, hey, man, this is all about being renewed for the creator because the creator is the one we better be pleasing. Come on, somebody. And the third and final thing I'm going to leave you with is this. Clothe oneself with some major things. I mean, you got to put on some things. You can't walk around the house all day with no clothes on. You got to throw some clothes on. You got to throw some spiritual clothes on. What are the spiritual clothes that God has sent throw on so he can be pleased, huh? Here it is. It's in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. The Bible says, therefore, God's chosen people people. Come on, somebody. If you are ch chosen, you mean to tell me God chose me? The liar, the person who was pleasing people, the person who couldn't say no, the person who was acting like everybody else, the person who found it difficult to, 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 you know, when I got people mad because I didn't do what they said, the person who was willing to go through any length, the person who spent plenty of money, went in debt, stressed all out, sleepless night. Now God said I'm a chosen person. I don't have to worry about them people no more. I am chosen by God. He said anybody that's chosen by God, there's something that's required of you. He says holy and dearly and love. Oh, my God. God loved me. I don't have to have this material stuff. I don't have to have all this gain to impress God. He loved me for who I am. Come on, somebody. He said, then listen, Rob. Listen to me. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You want to impress me? You're seeking after me. You really want to be content. You ought to try to put this on. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Then he backed it up in verse 14. And of all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. That's the kind of God you and I serve. That's the kind of God who wants to be pleased. That's the kind of God is saying, hey, listen, you better remember what people pleasing, the core, the root of people pleasing is, is the root of insecurity. I don't need to be insecure no more because I got a God who's called me by name. I don't have to have a, a behavior disorder that codependence on people who has to tell me you're doing a good job. I like what you're doing here. I like what you're doing. Now. Or, or better yet, let me do some things so I can get that out of them. Come on, somebody. That's not the God we serve. See, at the core of people, please, we got to remember that, listen, it turns into manipulation. You will give, you will say just to get what you need. That ain't nothing but manipulation. God ain't never manipulated us. He told us who we were and what he called us to do. And he started with his son. My brothers and sisters, a people pleasers can never be content. You can never be content because it ain't going to never be enough for nobody who's trying to please in the first place. And once you give them something, guess what? They still ain't pleased. They want some more. The more you give them, the more they'll draw out you. Mama already told you. 
You need to trust in God. My brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all this morning for tuning in. See, contentment is really going out there seeking to please God in all we do. See, because when we do that, enough is always good for God. He told you what he's looking for. You don't even have to worry about what he's looking for. He told you what to stop doing. He said, put the death that. Rid yourself of this. It ain't like you got the guest no more. Hey, just because the season changed, the Bible ain't changing. It's still written. I don't care what you think. It is going to be there when COVID-19 leaves. It's going to be there when God decided to crack the eastern stars and take us back. He ain't going to tell you how to. He already told us how to do what he called us to do in order to please and approve of him. For him, for, for him to have our approval. We want the approval of God in our lives. Mama told us, be content with what you have. I believe that mama had something from God. I believe that God knew mama had some things that God was telling her to tell the children. My brothers and sisters, I want to thank God for you this morning. I want to thank God for the first lady who came on to, to give us just a, a message of being really, really, really being content in this, this Mother's Day as well. I pray to all the mothers out there who's under the sound of my voice will continue to uh, find yourself to be at a place of honor just because God loves you more than you can even ask or imagine. And those of you all who have lost your mom and this is your first season ever, being about a Mother's Day without your mother, be encouraged that the things that your mother imparted in you, you can celebrate that. Yes, you can. Your tears are still welcome. But you can celebrate the fact that your mother did the best she could with what she had. And she did it loving God and truly loving you and your siblings. So may you be encouraged. Father God, we thank you for an opportunity to gather together this morning. Father, I ask that you would help anyone on the sound of our voice who have been a people pleaser. Who have, who have tried to, to, to just please people so that they can feel validated and feel accepted. Help them, God, to know that you and you alone, it's enough. You are enough in all that you do. Help those, God, who think they have to act like somebody else, the crowd, in order to fit in. God, I thank you that it's our sin that Jesus came to die for so that we can fit in in the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Oh, God, I thank you for that. God, I ask that you will help the persons who depend on others to give their validation. God, I thank you that you said we are already validated. We are, we are, we are dearly loved by you, God. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Help the person who's going through great lengths, oh God, to, to avoid conflict so that they, they can keep the people in their community. And God, knowing that them people are not good for them, God, I pray that they will be those who will overcome and help the person who finds it really hard to admit when they are hurt by the people that they've been trying to please. God, help them to be honest and truthful with them. And help us all, God, to be content in seeking to please you alone. We thank you, Father, that you're worthy. Thank you, God, that your word is true. God, I thank you that now we understand that commitment comes from seeking to please you in all that we do. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Hey, God, listen, y'all, I see y'all Wednesday. Hey, listen, thank you again for all that you do. If you want to get all the scripture references for today, Go to the rockofoursalvation.com and you will find the scripture references. We love you again. Happy Mother's Day. May God keep you. I love you.